Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Georgia Smart Communities Challenge final webinar. Um, just a few house rules. Um, we will be answering questions at the very end. Um, so if you uh, have a question, feel free to type it on your um, chat box and, and we'll consolidate the questions and, and answer them. Um, but feel free to type in your questions throughout the, the webinar and, and we'll, we'll pick them up as we go. Um, if you have questions with the volume or anything else uh, regarding the webinar, also please type it in on the chat box and, and we'll try to address it. But um, we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you again for joining our final webinar on the Georgia Smart Communities Challenge. Um, we'll, we have a short presentation that will go through the logistics and terms and conditions of the challenge and, and just give you a brief overview um, of it. Um, again, if you have uh, any additional questions after or during our webinar, feel free to uh, type them in um, on the chat box. So the things that we'll cover today are just a little bit about the challenge in terms of the uh, proposal submission, judging, and um, going through the questions at the very end. Um, the major mission of the Georgia Smart Communities Challenge is, is to really try to spur and drive smart community development throughout the state of Georgia. So we really don't have any limitations to size, geography, development, et cetera, um, and really encourage local governments throughout the state um, to form teams um, that are multidisciplinary and um, innovative to uh, create smart community uh, proposals um, that we could be in a position to really support and implement. Um, the goals of the challenge are, are many fold, but really, you know, beyond the smart community development, we're, we're really looking at uh, different uh, use cases for technologies and services, looking at uh, workforce development to um, drive uh, the demographic and social changes, and looking at some of the equity issues around smart communities, um, especially in terms of narrowing the digital divide. And, and through it all, really developing a um, Georgia model, um, you know, with uh, representing um, this as a state model for others um, in the country to look at. And indeed, this is the first statewide initiative in the country that is really modeled this way, and we're really excited about that. Um, we couldn't have done this without our, our slew of partners, and they've really been um, a, a champion of this from the very start, and so we want to make sure we acknowledge them. Um, we have partners not only um, from uh, Georgia Power and the Atlanta Regional Commission, but also from the Chambers of Commerce um, and the state agencies, as well as the private industry sectors. Um, with uh, the Technology Association. Um, so really thanks again for our partners in terms of helping us drive this partnership. The program that we'll get into further detail is, is going to be um, beyond just uh, the naming of the four winners at the end, but it is to provide um, financial assistance, technical assistance, and um, ongoing uh, subject matter expertise um, as you go through your um, implementation of the smart community uh, proposal. So really think of this as a um, ongoing exercise that uh, will bring together a wealth of experts um, that will drive your community towards smart development. Thanks, Deborah. This is Greg McCormick, uh, the director of, of the Smart Communities Challenge, and uh, previously that was Deborah Lamb, uh, <laughs> the director of the uh, Smart Communities, uh, Smart Cities and Innovation here at, here at Georgia Tech. So she was really the brainchild behind this, and, and I'm happy to, uh, to have gotten involved. Um, we're here uh, at the website, want to just talk about the proposal submission process and the proposal itself. Uh, if you go to the website, if you haven't already, please do so. There's a lot of good information there for you, um, including the, the guide to the challenge itself. It's about a 20-page document that you should read thoroughly to understand exactly what this challenge is all about and what we are hoping that you get out of it, as well as how to craft your proposal to try to win. <clears throat> so if you click on that proposal process, um, web link there at the bottom of the home page. It'll take you to the specific proposal process um, 
web page, which on the right side has a number of uh, PDF documents that you can download with, with all the detailed information that you need to, to go through this. Uh, the program guide, like I said, has all the very detailed specific information that you need. <clears throat> there is a proposal template as well. We're really hoping that as you craft your proposal that you use this template. It has all of the appropriate sections laid out for you that you need to complete, uh, as well as a number of other key pieces of information um, that make sure that your proposal meets our uh, objective requirements in order to move on to the judging phase. There's also a link there at the very bottom to, to submit your proposal that will take you to the submission proposal portal, of which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. But overall, uh, some terms and conditions about Georgia Smart. Uh, it's open to all the state of Georgia communities, and we're going to be granting four winners to this, two inside the metropolitan Atlanta region and two outside the Atlanta region. Uh, these specific regions are defined on the next slide by a 20 county region. Uh, if you're within that 20 county region, you're considered a metropolitan Atlanta community, and if you're outside, you're considered what we call a Georgia community. And what we're really hoping for is that it's not just a small city or small area that gets together on this. We're really hoping that there's some partnerships between geographic regions, city to city or city to county or, or other region. Uh, we're hoping that, that people really uh, get together, put their, put their minds together, and come up with um, really good ideas that can move your, your area forward. Um, we're also hoping that you reach out and partner with uh, non-government entities. Uh, we have a great interest uh, from industry. Uh, a num about 30 plus uh, companies have, have come to us um, with partnership opportunities for you as communities to, to reach out to them. Uh, we're putting that list together and we'll get that uh, to you shortly. That will be the, a list of companies, some specific uh, detailed information about them and the types of opportunities, um, the types of products and services that they have available to you, but also then specifically if they have uh, a partnership opportunity outside of their normal product and service where they've they're able to offer their products or services at low or no cost or some other specific deal for the winning communities. And lastly, um, we are asking as part of this challenge that you partner with a Georgia Tech researcher or, or research team to do some, uh, some fundamental research or analysis in the smart community space specific to your community. Um, on our website, we have over 30 um, tech professors and researchers uh, that have expressed interest to us in partnering with you as communities. So any one of those people would be a great person for you to reach out to and try to connect. Um, but please uh, look at what their relevant skill set is, what their research area is, and see uh, what you're interested in as a community in, in moving forward in Georgia Smart and try to find the appropriate professor to work with. So as I indicated previously, these two specific geographic regions that we're going to be uh, awarding um, the challenge to, uh, the metropolitan Atlanta communities I have list out, listed out there, the, the 20 specific counties uh, which are part of the metropolitan area. Uh, so if your county name is listed there, you are a metropolitan Atlanta community. If your county is not listed there, you are considered a Georgia community. And that's relevant because that dictates which type of area, smart community area, you can focus your proposal on. The area of smart mobility uh, can be, is, is a topic that both metropolitan Atlanta, Atlanta communities and Georgia communities can uh, pitch proposals around. And, and those topics of mobility have to do with, obviously, uh, transportation infrastructure, pedestrian infrastructure, um, public transit, multimodal transit, things like that, electrification of, of bus fleets and, and monitoring of traffic and, and other, other things like that. You know, there's a lot of um, topics in the mobility space that you could, that you could attack. Um, however, if you're a Georgia community, so outside the metro region, you can also look at the smart resilience 
smart topic area, which has more to do with uh, resilience of, of utilities and the community itself. Um, you can get into education, um, technology, uh, and workforce development, and other things in, in other areas that are, that are outside of the mobility space. So what do you get if you win? Well, these four winning communities will get funding of a $50,000 grant, and they are being provided by our two funding sponsors of Georgia Power and the Atlanta Regional Commission. Uh, you will also be asked as part of your proposal to come up with a way of matching that $50,000 grant dollar for dollar, so a $50,000 match. However, that match, you will not be required to uh, match at a full $50,000 in cash. We're only asking that 20% of that. <clears throat> Are we having some problem with the audio? I saw a comment come through about the audio. Anyone from the, from the audience, please uh, use your chat function to let us know if you can hear me right now. Okay, great. That might have been just a, a small technical hiccup. Thanks for that. We're going to move on. Um, so I was, I was talking about the, the match that we're asking communities to make. Um, I had indicated uh, it needs to be a $50,000 match, but it doesn't need to be uh, fully a cash match. We're asking that only 20% of that 50K, so $10,000 be a cash match. The other $40,000 can take the form of non-monetary match, so uh, some kind of um, uh, documented uh, um, value add from, it could be from the city and government itself in the form of uh, some volunteer effort or some space leasing or something like that, or it could come from a, a company in, within the community that's donating products or services as well. And then lastly, we, uh, we had already talked a little bit about the Georgia Tech researcher, but those are additional funding dollars that Georgia Tech itself is supplying to pay for the researcher for the year-long project for the winning communities. So if you go to the homepage on the website, again, you go to the bottom. There we have a number of, of specific areas that, that you can check out. The Research Partners and Advisors uh, page, if you click on that, you'll see the, the list of 30-plus of Georgia Tech researchers and professors that are, that are ready for you to, to connect with, and, and they their interests in areas uh, vary all the way from transportation, buildings, policy and planning, energy, software, simulations, uh, to Internet of Things, uh, and beyond. So we're really hoping that you take a look at that list and, and re reach out to a Georgia Tech professor that you think you, you would like to partner with. And again, we have a, a list of technology solutions providers or companies that, that we're, are willing and ready to, to network with communities in the state of Georgia. Um, and, and they can work with communities in a number of ways. They, they can partner with you right now during the proposal writing process. Uh, they can also partner with you during the year-long challenge itself. Uh, they, can, they can give advice uh, or they can actually offer you products or services to, to use within your, uh, your first year planning study. Uh, and we have over 30 communities uh, that are interested and we'll be getting you that information shortly. So the proposals themselves, uh, they need to address some very specific uh, areas that we're, that we're looking for. One is we need to see what your motivating narrative is. So what are your current conditions in your community and, and what are you striving for in this, in this smart space? What are you hoping to get out of this? Where do you want to see your, your city in five or ten years? Then we, we need you to come up with an overall framework for actually reaching those goals, becoming the smart city. And then specifically, we need to see what you plan to do during this first year of funding. Next, we need you to have a letter of support from a high-ranking community official in, in your city or in your community. Uh, this needs to, obviously, uh, this particular challenge is a, is a government-led challenge, so you, uh, as, a, as a company or as a researcher, as a private citizen, uh, can be engaged and can partner and can network with the local government, but you cannot run the, you cannot write a proposal yourself. You need to be partnered with a local government itself 
and they will be the, the leader. Um, and we're asking for that because you need to be able to enter into a contractual agreement with Georgia Tech to receive this funding, to receive this grant money, and appropriate it accordingly. So also within the proposal, you need to have a section on the Georgia Tech uh, research that you'll, be, that you'll be performing with your research partner here at Georgia Tech. Uh, so you, you need to reach out to them sooner than later and, and form a connection and get working on that. Um, and then another section you need to uh, is about the economics and, and how you plan to supply your matching support. So I, I briefly touched on this earlier, but the, the website in that proposal process uh, web page has a link to get uh, that proposal template. Please download it. Please look at it. Please use it during your, during your uh, writing of your proposal. And then the proposal submission portal, there's also a link in that area to, to click on. Here's a direct link itself that you can use to get to the submission uh, portal. Uh, at the lead, the technical lead or the government lead um, for your proposals should create an account on this site. And then this is where you will be submitting your proposal itself. That document needs to be a PDF document. That is the only format we will be accepting. You only need one account per proposal, um, but we must uh, get information from you on who the proposal point of contact is as well as who the lead government contact is. It can be the same person, but if they're different, we have areas for you to fill out for, for each one of those people. When you create an account on the proposal submission site, you will be assigned a team ID number. You need to hold on to that number and you need to use it on every page of your proposal, including the cover page. If you get that uh, template document, you'll see right on the cover page is, is a line for you to fill that in. We need you to have that and we need you to add that team proposal ID number to the header of every page in your proposal as well. That's how we're going to be tracking you specifically in your proposal through the judging process. Uh, you can update your proposal uh, as many times as you need up to the deadline of May 1st at 5 p.m. Um, only your most recent or last uploaded document will be used to be judged. So the judging criteria specifically, um, you'll be evaluated by a panel of six judges and out of those judges, we, they will be scored and the highest scores will produce four winners, two inside the metro Atlanta region and two outside and you'll be scored on both objective and subjective criteria. So the objective criteria um, is things like formatting, length, uh, your content, and, and having the support from the government and the community. Um, all of that is, is laid out fairly clearly within the proposal template. So as long as you use that template, you should, be, uh, you should have no problem meeting those objective criteria. Uh, then you'll be judged on the subjective criteria. So do you have a compelling story? Is it motivating? Do you have a good, smart vision for your community? And is it reasonable, um, realistic? And a, do you have a detailed first-year plan? Do you have a meaningful research integration? And do the economics work? Do you have uh, the matching funds? And do you have a vision for moving forward with this plan in the future, even beyond the first year, to, to see that, that you can actually go through the implementation phase. So lastly, the timeline. Uh, we are right here on April 11th. This is our second webinar. Uh, we had our workshop and expo on the 9th. For any of you that made it to that, that, that was a great day. We had over 100 people that, that came to that, um, an all-day event, and about 25 uh, companies that, that showed up and, and showcased their products and services to the communities. So we're really happy with the turnout at that and, and it was a great day. Uh, next up for us after today's webinar are we'll be hosting office hours in Tifton, Georgia for any southern communities that couldn't make it up to the workshop and expo. However, we do need to get specific registration from you if you do want to come to that. That's a long way for us to travel and, and we don't want to go down there if nobody's going to show up. So please uh, send us an email to register for that and, and we'll be in touch with you. Uh, 
May 1st are the, when the proposals are due, so that's about three and a half weeks away. So we're hoping that you're already working on your proposal. Uh, then when we get all those proposal, proposals on May 1st, we'll be disseminating them to our judges and they'll have three or so weeks to go through the judging uh, process. We'll get our winners and we'll be announcing those in early June. And then projects for those four winning communities will start in August. So a little bit more specifics on the future events, which la the last one uh, on the calendar is the April 20th office hours. They'll be from 10 to 2. It's an open door policy. That's the address of the Georgia Chamber office that we'll be at. Um, however, we really need you to reach out to us and specifically register for this. So please shoot us an email at that email address uh, supplied right there. Uh, if we don't get to your question today or if we miss your question for some reason, please feel free to email us at scii at ipat.gotech.edu, that, that, that email address on the previous page. But you can also reach out on the website. There's uh, a frequently asked questions area. And you can type in your name, email address, and, and give us a question, and we'll make sure that we get back to you. So that's the end of our uh, presentation. And so now we're going to go through uh, the questions that we've received from you in the chat function, as well as some other questions that we have already. Thanks, Greg. Um, so we're starting to get some questions. So um, some of the questions um, that we're getting is, if we partner with multiple communities to solve different problems, can we submit multiple proposals? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Um, as long as you um, make it very clear um, that, that there are multiple um, applications of that entity, then um, by all means, there's no limit um, to your ability to submit proposals. The main criteria is obviously we want to see um, the partnerships in place rather than any singular um, government entity submitted. Um, you as a singular government entity cannot submit multiple times. Um, another question that uh, I received was, um, if the list of uh, Georgia Tech researchers on the website, um, if you want to work with one that's not listed on the website, can you still work with them? And again, the answer is yes. Um, if you have another relationship um, or know another Georgia Tech researcher, by all means, reach out to him or her and um, make sure that uh, they're involved. Um, the list that we provide is not exclusive. Um, and it's just merely those that um, are, are, are a sample of um, the possible expertise that could be involved in your project. But if you are already working with a Georgia Tech researcher or already have a relationship with someone, um, by all means, feel free to reach out to them. Um, and we will be uh, delighted to have them involved. Great. So another question that came through uh, was dealing specifically with the proposal format and the appendices and which uh, types of partners should apply to uh, Appendix A and Appendix B, Appendix C. Um, so to answer that question, Appendix A is specifically for the, the letter from your lead government. So whether it's from your, your county, county CEO or, or head of Chamber of Commerce or mayor, uh, that is specifically uh, there to show that you have support from your local government. Um, any other partners, uh, whether they be community, industry, um, citizenry uh, partners, those can go in Appendix C. Um, a, a few more questions. Um, one of the questions is, why do we need to put a project ID listed in every page? And, and the answer to that is, we really want to make sure the judging criteria is fair. Um, and so we will um, use the project ID as the identification for each application, rather the name of the uh, community or the city or, or the county um, to uh, try to keep those biases limited. So the project ID number um, allows us to, you know, judge in, in, a, in a, a more um, anonymized fashion. And so those project ID numbers are important for the, the judges to um, look at. Yeah, Deborah. Thanks. You, your name, your community name. So if, if you're from, the, let's say, the, the city of Atlanta, uh, the city. Anytime the words 
city of Atlanta fall in your proposal, we will be blocking that out. So that's why we need you to put your team ID on the pages is so that in the end we can track whose proposal that actually was. Um, we're, we're trying to remove any, any potential of bias from the judging panels that could be based on geographic region or city or specific area. So that's why we really need to have a, a separate identifier besides the actual name of your community. Um, we have a question about the transparency of the judging process. Um, so if you go to the, um, again, the uh, additional links, you kind of will have a link on uh, the judging criteria. And, and you can see it's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of how we will be evaluating proposals. Um, as, as for the judges themselves, it will be a team that's outside um, the uh, uh, operation team um, where we will have a mix of external um, uh, subject matter expertise and uh, local uh, government uh, Georgia expertise. Um, that will be looking and evaluating the, the, the uh, proposals based on a pretty clear metrics uh, framework. So we, we will definitely keep that um, as, as uh, separate as possible from the um, operations of it. Um, uh, another question is on, you know, knowing what the other uh, possible um, uh, competing proposals are. So what we've already done is, if you go to the website, you will already see a, a, a map of Georgia that already shows all the different interested communities um, throughout the state that have already um, expressed um, desire to participate. And the reason why we put that map on is that we want uh, the opportunity for other communities to reach out to neighboring communities or fellow communities to see um, possibilities um, to join forces or whatnot, and, and just to show the, the breadth of interest throughout the state. So that's already on the website um, right now to, to allow for that. Um, those that also went to the workshop um, would have been able to also see that um, the, the groups that uh, were uh, split up in the afternoon already showcased some of the um, initial ideas um, that came out of um, the, the small group thinking um, to help facilitate the development of the proposal. There was another question about um, clarifying intra-city competing proposals. So we're not asking for you uh, to partner with your next door neighbor if you don't want to. We're just encouraging it. Um, there can be multiple proposals from the same city, uh, from the same geographic region. Um, however, if you see alignment between your ideas and, and, and an additional intra-city proposal, um, we're encouraging you to uh, partner and, and participate with them. However, we're not uh, requiring that of you. One more question about the highest ranking community letter in this and the proposal. So um, we do want to make sure one of the most important factors to success in any smart community project um, is the uh, um, approval support mandate of the local government leadership. Um, you know, to really drive the vision and, and really uh, support the implementation throughout. Um, and so this case, we really need to see um, a letter of commitment or, or, or some uh, indication of support um, from whatever the local community uh, or government um, leadership be. Now, that might be the city mayor, city manager, or the county um, uh, manager, commissioner, you know, whatever uh, is the local community or local government authorities' um, top designee, um, we want to make sure that um, they are on board and can fully support um, this project to um, help ensure its success. And, and some of that has to do with the specific need for you as a, uh, the proposer to be able to supply the required matching funds. Um, I, I, I can only assume that a local citizen um, would not be interested or able to, to uh, 
come up with the, the matching funds required to, to meet that need. Um, however, those could come from a local government entity, uh, and that's why you need to have support from them so that you can work to, to come up with that matching portion. Right, and so that that buy-in from the um, you know local government leadership and and that team um, that's multidisciplinary um, from the proposal is is really critical to the success of a smart community project. And again, how we're defining smart community um, is is pretty broad in terms of how we can improve you know basically the quality of life for that. Um, uh, local area using technology data and and you know the application and processes of that and and so you know I, we really um, encourage that team to have that common alignment and that vision um, towards that if if there are already um, disagreements um, you know it will be hard um, for that project to be successful so showing that common vision and how the team is structured um, uh, to understanding the roles and responsibilities of, of each of the team members is going to be important for the success of the project. I believe we've answered all the questions. Potentially there's one more. Um, so again, if you are a solution provider, a question is how do you want to get involved and what's the best way to engage? Um, uh, earlier Greg spoke about uh, a couple ways to get involved. Um, one of the earlier ways that we got involved was um, we had a whole expo at the workshop um, earlier this week where you could um, interact with the communities and kind of share some of your services and, and um, ideas around smart community development to raise knowledge and awareness. But going forward, um, obviously we encourage solution providers to um, be part of a team um, that a community may wish to be uh, submitting the proposal of or um, to please contact us. Um, if, if you don't want to be part of an, a singular team or, or a few teams, if you really want to be involved with the whole challenge and support the four winners um, throughout the, the year-long engagement at the end, um, please do contact us and, and we will be um, following up with you on, on what that engagement would look like. But at this point, there are um, uh, two ways to be part of the challenge. One again, is to be part of a team um, within individual or multiple proposals that would be led by the local community or government, or two, um, to be part of the challenge um, team operations and to think about how to um, engage uh, with the winning communities at the end as part of the year-long engagement. Um, uh, and if that's the latter, then please do contact us. If it's the former, please do reach out to your local community contacts um, to help them uh, develop their proposal or initiative. Thank you again. Um, again, uh, this uh, PowerPoint and the recording of the PowerPoint will be available up on the website shortly. The first webinar PowerPoint and recording is already up on the website, so um, it's a similar uh, uh, pieces of information, but with maybe slightly different questions. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to us through the email website or fill out the form on the website and we'll respond as, short, as quickly as possible. There is also a page of frequently asked questions that you might be able to view if you had um, common uh, questions that we probably already answered. Um, again, our, our final uh, outreach um, is uh, a Tifton um, that uh, if you are interested in, please uh, email your registration in advance and we will contact you and follow up with you. The proposal, again, is due on May 1st um, and you have to submit it online by 5 p.m. Eastern. Thank you again um, and take care. Thanks very much.